All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are again talking about mirrors, but we're going to be talking about spherical mirrors, which are a bit more complicated than the plane mirrors we were doing last time. All right, here we go. So spherical mirrors are curved mirrors shaped like sections of spheres. They can be concave, reflective on the inside. This is the concave one. Or convex, reflective on the outside. Concave mirrors cause parallel rays to converge at a focal point. So we have that the focal point right here, represented by this F, used in applications like telescope, headlights, and shaving mirrors. We've probably mostly seen it with shaving mirrors or makeup mirrors. You those kind of mirrors when you get really close to it, everything gets really big. Um, so you've probably seen that before. Uh, convex mirrors cause parallel rays to diverge, often used in security mirrors and vehicle side mirrors for a wider field of view. Probably, yeah, when if you're shopping and to vet, prevent people from stealing stuff, they have these view, uh, mirrors so that you can see more widely. Kind of like in, um, oh, I guess in the first section over here, like these mirrors here allows you to look a little bit, have a more of a wider view. All right, uh, a spherical mirror has a curved surface shaped like a sphere. The focal point is where parallel rays converge and reflect after reflecting. So we can see that's where the light reflects for, for a concave, and that is the focal point, okay? We can see over here the where the, the convex mirror, where they diverge, this is the focal point, okay? The center of the curvature, C, is the center of the sphere from which the mirror is cut, or the radius of the circle. So this is the cur center of the curvature, C, or the radius. The focal length is F, is the distance from the mirror to the focal point. Uh, the radius of cur curvature, R, is the distance from the mirror to the center of curvature. Thing to know is the focal length is equal to half of the radius of curvature okay all right moving on let's put i know a lot of that was like mumbo jumbo to you but as we do the problems hopefully it makes a little bit more sense so first we're going to talk about drawing these ray diagrams and seeing where images form so first we're going to do concave and then we'll talk about convex next so ray diagrams help locate images formed by spherical mirrors there are four key rays used in the in these diagrams. So there's four ways to kind of find out where the um, uh, image is going to be. And you only need two of them, but I'm going to show four of them. A ray parallel to the principal axis reflects through the focal point. Okay, so parallel. So we're going to the top of the image right here. And then we're going to go straight across. And then it's going to reflect. And it's going to reflect through the focal point okay that's what it says through the focal point okay that's the first ray so that's the first drawing you can do the second one a ray through the focal point reflects parallel to the principal axis so if you have this going through the focal point then it'll reflect back uh, parallel or horizontally like this So this reflection here, maybe I should draw the reflection differently. Um, there we go. I'll draw the reflection like this. Dot, 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 Okay. And now, now that we have two, we can see that the image is going to be right. It, the image is going to be where all the rays converge. So we would have an inverted image like this. So you could kind of test this out if you had like a makeup mirror or shaving mirror and you went further out you would notice that your face would be upside down and it would be bigger okay another way to get a ray is a perpendicular to the mirror and reflects back on itself so wherever the radius of curvature is you would go through that and then since it's right at the radius of curvature it'll just kind of bounce back and you can see it, it converges at that same point. And the last one, 
a ray that hits the mirror at an angle to the principal axis reflects back at it. So it'll go right at the principal axis. This is the principal axis right here. And then it'll reflect right back at that point. Okay, so those are the four ways of drawing the rays that you can do. And wherever it converges, that's where the image is going to be. And, you know, you only have to do two of them because just like after step two, we already found out where it was. But these other ones you can do in case. All right, moving on. So this is for a convex now. Spherical mirror ray diagrams for a convex. Ray diagram help locate images formed by spherical mirror. There are two key rays used in these diagrams. So kind of similar, but there's going to be one distinct difference. Okay, so first, ray parallel to the principal axis appears to reflect from focal point. Draw a ray from the top of the object parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, it appears to diverge from the focal point behind the mirror. <clears throat> okay, so what's going to happen is we're at the top over here. We're going to go straight across like last time. And this time, it, what happens is it's going to reflect up. But everything's going to look, kind of reflect out of the sphere. So that's not going to help. But it diverges into the mirror and into the focal point like that. Okay? Number two. Array towards the mirror vertex uh, symmetry. Okay, so what happens is... We can have it go right to the middle. And last time we learned, you know, it's going to make the symmetry, but that's not very helpful because it's just going out. But the diverging, when it goes inside the mirror, goes like this. So now we find the point of conversion right there. And then we can see the image. It's going to be a little bit smaller inside of it. All right, moving on. So uh that's probably a bit confusing but we're going to do a few examples hopefully to make it make sense make it make sense i love saying that <laughs> types of images real images so real images form when light rays actually converge at a point usually formed by concave mirrors when the objects beyond the focal point so a real image like we saw last time see this is where the rays actually converge at a point so this would form a real image. It's upside down, but it's real. As opposed to this, it diverges in, inside the mirror. And that is not real. That is a virtual image. Okay. Virtual Im image form when light rays appear to diverge from a point behind the mirror and commonly seen in plane mirrors and convex mirrors. Upright images in the same orientation as the object, usually virtual. So... For example, this one is upright, so that's good. But this one is inverted, so that's not upright. Upright images in the same orientation as the object virtual. Inverted images is flips upside down, usually real. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, some good demos showing concave and convex mirrors, so highly suggest watching that. And here is a summary of the types of image you would get uh, depending on the location. Not really something you have to copy, but it would be a bit helpful. So if you want to pause it, look at it and everything like that. All right, we're going to move on. Look at the diagram below. Uh, select all that apply about the image. Okay, so we have the object here and we have the image here. First of all, we can see it's smaller. We can see it's upright and we can see it's behind the mirror. So and it takes some time if you want to see what you know about it. But what's going to happen is it is virtual and it is upright. Okay, because since it's behind the mirror, uh, and it's going to be a uh, virtual. And since it's upright, it's upright. Okay, look at the diagram below. This is a concave. Select all that apply about the mirror uh, image. So it's on the same side, the image. This is the image here. It's on the same side. So that means it's going to be uh, real. And it's not upright, it's upside down, so it's inverted. Okay. Moving on. Look at the diagram below. Select all that apply about the image. Uh, well, we have to see what the image looks like. So we could do a few things. We could kind of talk about what we learned. Uh, we go parallel here. 
and then it goes through the focal point. And there's a lot of different things uh, we could do at this point. Um, oh, the other one I guess we could do is go th oops through the focal point, and then this way. And now we can see that the image is going to look something like this. Uh, there's also other things that we learned, but you only need two, so that's all I'm going to draw. Uh, again, it should look something like that. So what is this? This is real. It's on the same side as the object. And then it is inverted because it's upside down. So it should look something like that. All right, moving on. Look at the diagram below. It's like all that apply about the image. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Going this way. Oops, sorry. And then it's going to go through there. And then this one, now it's going to go through the focal point. And then that way. So this one, uh, this would go like this. And then this will go like this. So this one is actually diverging through. So it looks something like that. Okay, it doesn't meet on this side because the object is really close. So it diverges, it's behind the mirror. So that means it is virtual. And then it is upright. Okay, moving on. Like most, like all that apply. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's go this way, oops. Not very good at drawing these, but hopefully it is good enough. And then let's go through the focal point. So the image would be something around here. So it would be real and it's inverted. Okay. All right. Or right, let's look at this example, a uh, convex mirror. Uh, look at the diagram below, select all that apply about the image. Okay, so convex here. So remember we're going parallel here. Boom, and then it's going to go towards the focal point. But we have a mirror, so it's going to go something like that. While this one diverges like that. And then we have one that's going towards the focal point. Around there, something like that. And then, oops, no, and then it reflects back over here. But then this one diverges into here. So it should look something like this. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be virtual because it's behind the mirror and it's upright. So it should be something like, yep, like that. All right. And that's pretty much it. That's all, all the conceptual. This will really help you, especially when we do the math part to understand the math part more. So next time we're going to be doing more of the math formulas and everything like that. So I'll see you with that. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.